All right, so hello world, welcome back to the most likely the final video that is on um, Flask tutorial. So t in this tutorial, uh, in this final tutorial, we're gonna talk about do a quick recap what we did, and then talk other module or functions that Flask native Flask provide, and some external. Flask that people build to help us to speed up our Flask development process. Um, and then lastly, we're gonna do a cliffhanger and a teaser on Django. All right. So let's do a quick recap first. So we we what we did is we first we learned um, basic Flask route how route work and how to return an HTML template. Then we talk about HTML and then converter in the route and now to pass a pr variable parameter to the Jinja template. Then we talk about how to how could you add custom filters to the Jinja to Jinja. And then we talk about form processing and HTML HTTP, sorry, get an HTTP post. I will also talk about register and login using a CSV file. And then lastly, talk about database, some simple commands, SQLite 3, how to connect this with our Flask. So in this final tutorial, we're going to, so that's all the recap. Now we work on the two projects, uh, you are a shortener or a bit.ly clone or and, um, and a live chatting app or a Discord clone. So for tutorial 23, which I just looked it up, which should be the last, the most, uh, the last fast tutorial, I guess, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about two more commands that you can use. So first is you can see I imported some other module uh, function, redirect and URL4, I briefly talk about them, I'm going to talk about them again. And then notice that I import um, another module called flash. So what Flash does is can uh, enable message flashing. Let me explain what that does. So uh, go ahead and change the line, which in the old version, what we did in here is we just return a plain text saying wrong credential. But this time I return, I flash the message first. So saying wrong credential set a category where what type of this message is, is danger, where just a red alert, you can check a bootstrap on that information. And then you can see I return redirect URL4 index, recall that URL4 is an endpoint, so the stuff that are here is actually the function name, and then this turn it into a route, so redirect to the route. And then, now in layout.html, which is the main file, you can see I comment this out, recall that how it comments in Jinja, let me remove these comments, and now I can see I said for, for message in get flashed message is category true, so this basically is a Python way to saying, okay, let's get the flashed message. So what message get flashed? And then here you can see we create an alert. And notice that I use this to get the category of the alert. So in this case, it's danger. And then this get the content. And this button is the little X button right here. Shows that, um, shows if you click on it, it's gonna close the alert. And that's basically it. So let's go start this Flask application. All right, so if I click log in, I just put some random value here. Now you can see, whoops. Okay, so we are using session for some reason. Um, it's fine. So when you see that error, you can see app.config secret key. You need to put some secret value here, but for me, I'm just gonna put a secret key. Refresh. Now, if we try to fill out the information again. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot it's not a debug mode. Right. 
And now you see hello world. The message didn't get flashed for some reason. Uh, let me do a quick debug. Okay, the index doesn't inherit. Well, I mean, that's great. So I'm going to change it really quick. So I'm going to change it so it does inherit. Let me just home page here. Okay, let's try again if we fill out some jibber jabber value. Wrong credential, so now you can see it flashed a message. And it doesn't work when I clicked it. For some reason. Oh, okay. I don't know why that happens. Sometimes it does, but now you can see this is essential for a message flashing. And then, last thing we can talk about, not the, not the last thing, but the other stuff I want to talk about is called abort. So, what abort does is basically, if, for example, let me create another route. Add up the route slash hello world slash admin only. So you have to be an admin to use this route. And then obviously, let me design this. And then I will say abort 403. So. I don't care who are you, even if you are admin, which you have no way to be an admin, since so by default, we're just gonna abort 403. So let's try again, navigate to this route, and see what's gonna happen. Now you can see there's a default message here saying forbidden. You don't have mess, uh, permission to access the requested source, it's either read protected or not readable by the server. So now I can see it's by 403. 403 is a restriction error, which means that you must have certain, you don't have permission to view this page. But what if you want some custom page? And then what you can do really is just return random templates here and add some random templates here. But what I want to show you is a more general way to do it. So you're going to use an error handler. So you can say app.error handler. And now you're gonna specify what type of error do you want to do. So you're gonna do 403. Define. You can say uh, can I say define uh, uh, no permission. It's gonna take a parameters e, I think. Yeah. E for error, and now what we're going to say is we can return some contents, let's just say return, um, you don't have permission to view this page. Remember, you must, you also need to explicitly, uh, same 403 again here, in order to let that work. Uh, and now if we try to refresh. So error handler wrong. Yeah, there we go. And now you can see it. Re uh, it does a uh, custom for through page that we designed. You can definitely make it more complex. You can also create a five oh five uh for a uh, five hundred error or internal server error. You can also create some uh, other kind of error. This can actually takes in some like. Other specific specific values like index error. So, what we could say here is we could say print return bracket uh, bracket zero one two three, and then I want to get the seventies uh, value, which obviously doesn't exist. And then if we try refresh this page. 
what you also see is this page. So recall, uh, this can also be used for the index error. So recall that after return, the statement does not work. So if I comment this out, it will still be the same because uh, this takes an index error also. And so this is going to occur index error, and this is going to cache index error, and then going to do stuff below. All right. So that's about everything I'm going to cover in native Flask. Some other stuff you can use is Flask admin, Flask user, which you can Google a GitHub where like the most popular Flask extension. I usually don't use a lot of extension because I like design things on my own. Um, but if you want to, you can feel free to use them again. Uh, they are a really good uh, extension. Again, you can go to GitHub, just search Flask. They're going to show a bunch of lists to you. You can usually they are available on pip, which you can install them. And uh, yeah, that's um, briefly closing our flask. And now what we will talk about is Django. So Django is the next web development server, web development backend with Python. Uh, we're going to talk about with Django. Personally, I still prefer flask just because of freedom and give it to, to customizers thing and how easy it is. But um, I will talk about Django anyway. And then in Django, we're also going to build another project since the project is going to be so big that we're only going to build one. And what project it is, we're going to keep it a secret for now. But as of now, thanks for watching. As always, if you like, please smash the like button and subscribe as well. If you haven't, again, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you next time.